Well, that, that's me on Twitter. Um, it's a friend of mine, very good designer who did it. I've been fighting about my face and internet. I'm afraid of facial recognition in the future, so. Um, how many people know here what is a screen scrapping? Less than half. That's cool. That's happened when we do the, the meetups the meet in Buenos Aires about journalists and hackers. Um, screen scrapping is a technology to convert uh, content developed for human that can be understood by machines. So uh, I will try to, to explain what, what we are doing in Buenos Aires and why I'm here. I'm a journalist. I've been working here in newspaper for 15 years. I'm editor of two sections in the national newspaper. But uh, I'm not talking about that. Today I'm talking about what journalists and uh, software engineers are doing in Buenos Aires. Um, just a little uh, information about South America. I suppose that you don't know that we, we are one of the biggest uh, economies in the world that is growing. That's the difference. At it's happening here in Europe. Um, Argentina has 71% uh, of uh, people watching news websites. It's a very good, very good uh, percent. And uh, Buenos Aires has one of the biggest entrepreneur community in South America. It's, we have a very good hub between Buenos Aires and uh, Chile and maybe Brazil, who has the most biggest uh, Market. Those are uh, the accelerator, the i three three accelerators, Waira, BA accelerator, and X Labs. They are people f uh, looking for ideas about internet. But the print of newspaper circulation is going down. This is the last years of national Argentinian newspapers. The main newspaper Clarín is going down quickly. So why we need Superman? Because uh, we say hacks is the people who can. Uh, hack uh, an idea, to cut an idea. And we say that hackers are people related with development, no? So I found that Superman has both. He's a Clark Kent, he's a journalist, and he's a Superman. For journalists, the hackers are a kind of Superman. Or uh, why do we need Superman? Are the business model, classic business model going down? Anyway, we started in April with an idea. I'm, I, I really like to talk about what we are doing, not what happened before. Um, now we have, well, in this day, we have 435 people inscribed in this meetup group. Hack hackers, I'm going to tell you a little later what is it. We've done four uh, meetups, two hackathons, uh, one webinar with the Foundation of uh, Journalists in Colombia. Uh, we, we are the biggest hack hackers chapter in, in South America and one of the biggest in the world. Uh, we have a very big uh, startup. Um, but what do we do? We found we get together between journalists and software engineers to develop new kind of uh, software. Hack hackers is not my invention, it's uh, an idea that came from the Stanford University where uh, some people say we have to to get those areas together, Bert Herman, Aaron Philofer, and another guy that I don't remember right now. And uh, the biggest is in New York, they have 2,000 people inscribe it and do a lot of good stuff. Anyway, let's go to business. What, what we found when, when we started with Hack Hackers, we started in April and, and the, the growing has been huge. Uh, we found sources, tools, we found uh, metrics. Have we found data journalism? Mm, not really. This is a tool for journalists. You should know that there is a lot of open data tool. This, this is a guy, Manuel Aristarain. His Twitter is in the back, at the bottom. What Manuel do with the local government in Buenos Aires, in, in Bahia Blanca, is 800 uh, kilometers on the south of Buenos Aires. He did a screen scrapping or scrapping from the government, gasto publico vallense, that means that is the public uh, budget of the government of Bahia Blanca, is uh, 
a city. So he's watching what the government do with the money every day by a website. And uh, this, this idea has been replicated with other places in, the, in Buenos Aires. So I, I want to tell you what happened then with, with that what, and what, what is the government doing to, to stop this. But that's a source. It doesn't tell a story. It, it gives you information to tell the stories. We have a capitolion.com.ar. It's also a digital source. It's a, an, a website that look what the government is doing in the Congress, what deputies and uh, senators. And we have three metrics. Social metrics, that's uh, not only metric about what's happening, if, uh, but only sorry, but what is going on inside the content. So if the content is okay or if the content is bad, if the people talk in a good way from the brand or in a bad way. For example, the telephonic companies has 10% of uh, good, uh, positive uh, image in the web and 90% is negative. Well, does it help? Yeah, it does help, but it's, it doesn't tell stories. We found a very nice tool. They, they, they are a very good example of what is happening in South America because they started in Buenos Aires. Then they moved to Chile. There is a good local hub in Chile. It's a startup Chile. They put $40,000 to startups that came from outside Chile to create a hub in Chile. What they do, it's simple. They play with data. There is a lot of uh, tables around the web and they do a kind of a stream of that table that you can export to other sites. For example, when you have elections, the official site put uh, information in the election site every second, and then you can export it and use it in your, in your website as a streaming, like a video streaming is a table streaming. Now they are in Silicon Valley, they're very strong. And they've been participating not only in our hacks hackers, but in New York. Sorry, in Silicon Valley. We have we found the garage lab. It's a lab in a garage. Well, there was no there was no garage. But I, what I'm told, I showing you, they they put a gasto público vallense. Uh, this is a joke because the official site of the government put a captcha. So. Now it's very hard to find the way to to scrap the information from the official government site, you know. So the site open information, but it's not really easy to use it. So we have another idea that is not this presentation. That is a PDF spider that one of the hack hackers community member created in a in a hackathon in in Boston. They have a problem with the government because they, uh, the government uh, released PDF about the, the budget, but a few months later, those PDFs change. So the information that they say they are uh, 500 million, three months later, were 700 million. You know? So it's very hard for journalists to understand when that information changed in the digital area. So they create a spider of PDF, so you run once, and each time you run it later, they tell you which exactly archives are changing. So it's going to be hard. I hope that they don't put the captcha. Anyway, we, we met uh, Malte Spitz. That's not our uh, scenario. Um, I don't know if you know him, but Malte Spitz is a, a German from from the the Green Party that he asked to the enterprises, uh, telephonic enterprises, to give his information about where he's been last six months. He went to the judges, uh, they gave the information. They give an Excel, he created a map. This is a map where you can see a red point of last, last uh, six months of his life in real time, in real world. So he's been in Buenos Aires, we'll be talking with him. This is one of the key examples of what data journalists can do. They can tell a story with a map. You, you, I can tell you that the people, that the, the, the telephonic companies um, keep your data, but it's better to see that in real time, in real life. So, how, 
how do they work? How does, how did, sorry, why did Clark Kent never get fired? You know? He's a hacker. There's now another explanation. He's always flying. How, how do we do to work? Anyway, we went to that the journalist uh, idea to the media and we found a wall. Nobody understood first. So we did ourselves outside. We say, why do media has to invest in that? They have a credibility. You, you put the source. They have users to spend more time online. If you use this data from multi speeds, you spend a lot of time there. It's hard to copy. Okay, I like the copy, but it's good to explain to the businessman. Uh, it can generate database users, can generate disruptive procedures. So they start thinking about it. We did something quickly. I'm starting now to talk to you about what we've been doing. We went to a conference in the morning. And we said, we are going to do a HTML5 video interpreter. We, we're going to show what is happening in a conference. For, he, for example, this conference, about 30 minutes. This was 40 minutes. So we want to do an app that can interpret what is happening in the conference. So during the moment that the guy is talking, there is a lot of things happening around him. So, but it's difficult to watch that. So why don't we put interpretation on the side and we do that uh, Twitter online in real time and uh, that's HTML5 so it's a very very easy way to do that and then that became a, an app to do with other kind of conference but this is the most important thing that I want to talk about is uh, mapa76.info what is that we have a big problem with the trials of the Argentine military dictatorship. We have trials around the country right now, 30 years after the cup that came in 75. So that's what that's the name of the project. 30,000 disappear, or maybe a little less. 250 convicted, 10 trials, 10 future trials, 10 years more. How how do we? produce or process all this information? H how do we analyze those huge amounts of information? How do we find relationship in that testimonies that we cannot find by human procedures? That information could be useful for journalists, justice, and NGOs. So it's a fact of four things, basically people, organizations, places, and timeline, or time. So, those are the four facts that we want to solve. But those people are not all the same. We have different kind of people. Organization, places, home, time. And we have a lot of sources to the same stuff. No? We have judgments, fundamentals, allegations, articles. It's a huge amount of information. It's very hard to process, to understand what's really going on there. So, we found a black, sorry, African-American Superman. Um, and we do a hackathon. We went to Technopolis. It's the, the biggest uh, conference right now developed by the government. We found about 40 people to work on that. So we focus on three things, a map, a timeline, and to find relationships. So how does it work? Map as it in the it's not open for public now. You upload a document, the software is tracked the address, and then it shows the address in the map. It looks like this in the first step. Well, it does not show really any story, but it's an idea of what's happening in the document. We, we start with documents, huge documents of 100 pages of things like that. We have another idea. How do we extract names? So user upload the document, the software extract the document, 
And then we have to relate with actions. That's how it shows when you put the document. It gives you information about names and also some mistakes. But we are merging this information with uh, databases of uh, kidnapping people and databases of people judged. So we are filtering this information from outside. After that, we, we found a name. And that name, it's related with an action. From where to where, what did he do, or what happened there? And then we start to show that in a timeline. So the idea is to have a platform where you can bring these different kind of information, these different sources, and play with data to understand what is going on in a huge amount of information. What's next? We, we have to work on the interface. We have to work on timelines, on queries, on lawyers. We're working on that. We have a team of 50 people working. We want to see the names in this way. This is not ours. Use cases are huge. What do we do with data? When people was with, with other one? So we have still people looking for disappear in Buenos Aires, in Argentina. And we have still people find the relationship through Google, looking for a name and find that someone talked about him, that he was in a center. So we found some keywords to understand the different moment of the story of life. No? Kidnapping, transfer, survivors, captivity. Those are the keywords that we are relating with data and with uh, timeline. What's next? Facial recognition. We have a lot of pictures about this moment, so we think that that could be useful for the justice to understand the pictures through facial recognition. And the next big step is going to be semantic web. It's a whole new discussion. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to get in through that. So that's the future. We need Superman and other guys, so it's going to be hard. Well, that's us. We don't look like it's not <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, um, but at least we are happy, and uh, now we are 430 people, and uh, we are doing something very, very interesting. Now I should be in Buenos Aires. Sorry. This Saturday we are we are doing a, a hackathon about election. We have a national election on Sunday. So we started working with fusion tables to understand in real time what is happening in elections. So we've been working with the elections, preliminary elections that we had two months ago. And uh, we imported the information that we have to fusion tables. Fusion tables is an amazing tool for journalists and hackers. So if you see at my to the left is uh, how the election went to the to the possible be, uh, winner that's going to be the actual president. But then we find at the right how one uh, uh, people running for president from one uh, province has influence around his territory, but not outside that. The black is the highest, and you have yellow around. So now we have a lot of interest about media to share this and to use that. So we are using community uh, kind of, uh, how Mozilla Foundation said, is a kind of uh, uh, benevolent dictatorship to work with open source projects. You know the projects when they are open source, they can be forked. They can move if they don't like what is happening inside. So that's why they say that it is a benevolent dictatorship. So you need people to to be a CEO, <laughs> but if we don't like what is happening, we move to other CEO. Um, so after a year, 
we started in April, now we have 435 people and a lot of interest in the media. So I think that we pass the media, we pass the wall, and we're inside. So we are very happy, and uh, there is a lot of ideas that have been starting thinking about it. And I think that the revolution has become, and well, thank you very much. <laughs>